Well, welcome back, and uh, thank you for putting up with me for the first half. This is the second half, and unfortunately, I've got to tell you that it gets even simpler. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about is from our friends, the suppliers, you know. And I think, you know, like I said, they were important. The other thing I think is sometimes they need to get married to each other. I don't mean actually, but how they can work together. And the, the gentleman there with the, the stem broccoli who to me seems very passionate about what he, what he does. Uh, I've got a wee thing here. I've got his, the stem broccoli. And what I've done is I've cooked the, I've, I've basically cooked the, the stems. I've quartered them. I've cooked them in the rapeseed oil. I've added a bit of balsamic. I've seasoned them up. I've let them go cold. This you could serve hot, you could serve cold. Again, if you're talking about money, if you're talking about a six course tasting, this is one of the courses. Uh, it's a bit big like, but never mind. So, and I've cooked the florets separately. And I've put a few walnuts around it. Then the lady, I think it's a lady, with the St. Andrew's cheese, we've put a little bit of the St. Andrew's cheese on there. So the first marriage is between the broccoli and the cheese. And then I've got some of the salt, and because I only need a wee bit, I was gonna put it in the thing, but what I've done is chop it down because I don't want it too, too strong. So I've chopped it down with a knife, and I'm gonna put a little bit on the florets, and I'm gonna put a little bit. So the next marriage we've got is between the sea salt, the cheese, and the broccoli. And I think sometimes, these kind of suppliers that have got big hearts and great products and want to move things forward, sometimes they can help each other. And they can, for whether it's PR, marketing, distribution, um, just talking to each other, how they do things and how they get things forward. Because for us, for me as a chef, what I want is those people to produce the greatest stuff in the world, tell me what to do with it, I'll do it, wow. That's easy, that's what I like. Uh, but I think they can get together uh, and do a thing. First thing I'm gonna do is a tatty pancake. Uh, in France they call it a potato beignet, but it's a potato pancake. Again, how much does it cost to make a potato pancake? Not a lot. Oh, the other thing, well, sorry. Need to tidy up. Whoops. I made some lemon gel as well to go with that. I didn't see anybody growing lemons over there like, but it could be anything. I bought, I bought these, these uh, little uh, things in Dunelm the other day. Um, 50 for three pound 50, I thought it was quite good. And I made the lemon gel, basically I've got um, two cups of, of lemon juice, one cup uh, of water, 10.5 grams, of um, agar agar, or whatever you call it. And it did. Ah, that's the stuff, right? And again, the broccoli likes lemon and it likes garlic. And of course, you know, the Swiss. And I'm just going to put a few dots. And note, it's white. It's not yellow. You know, sometimes, again, don't get tempted to think, oh, well, it's lemon, so it needs to be yellow. We'll put some color in it. You know, or what, make it what it is. The other thing with lemons, if you want it to taste a bit bitterer, put some of the zest in. If you want it sweeter, Put a bit of sugar in. But you, you, you can determine what you want by what sugar, what salt, what part of the lemon you use, etc. And that may, and of course, you know, the gels. People get carried away the, with colors sometimes. Sometimes it better just be natural. Many, many years ago, I got sent to uh, the Great Northern Hotel in King's Cross. I can assure you it wasn't the greatest hotel in the world. And that night, on a banquet, it was broccoli with the main course. And when the guy from the veg corner, the entremetier in those days, was serving it, it looked like cauliflower with green coloring. 
because that's what it was. And I said to him, what are you doing? Possibly not in that tone of voice. And he said, well, we didn't have any broccoli, so I just colored the, cauli the cauliflower up. <laughs> you know, don't get sidetracked with all these kind of bits of crap. You know, stick to what is true, and, and then you'll end up with a good, a good outcome. You know, don't, don't try and, you know, start adding yellow. If you want something yellow, add a tint of saffron or something like that. But don't, don't mess about with nature. Nature does a far better job. You know, if you speak to the gentleman growing broccoli, you know, the ground, what you put into the ground, what makes, makes the food what it is. And we're fortunate in Scotland. We've got this thing that comes from the sky. And it comes quite often, it's called rain. <laughs> and although we might not like it, the umbrella salesmen do, but for growing things, it, it's, it's brilliant. I'm gonna make this potato pancake. The recipe is dead easy. Uh, I've got 500, I, I was gonna sort of talk for 15 minutes while the potatoes boil, but I, I decided I'd, I'd cook the potatoes. So I've boiled them for 15 minutes. Again, any old time, it doesn't work, yeah? These are Morris Pipers. Not that Morris Pipers are anything special. My little thing about potatoes at the moment is you get a lot of potatoes and you have to peel half of them off because they're not good enough. You know, quality. These come from Persia. Uh, they're a Morris Piper potato. They're great for boiling. They're great for making mashed potatoes. There's other kinds of potatoes you can use for mash. But again, use the right kind of potato for what, for what they are. You know, you, you can't, if, if you're going to use a baking potato and you're going to use it for everything, you're going to have some disasters. You know, even if you've got a recipe, it's not going to work. So use the right kind of potato. I need to add a little bit of milk, which is exactly 500 grams. Again, you might find it easier. I don't, I don't know if you're wondering or whatever, in the same, but, but milk, why, why are you using a weight rather than a thing? Why I'm using a weight is because they're all weights. So I've weighed that, I've weighed that, I've weighed that, I've weighed that. So it's all the same. I'm not using a jug and a ding. For me, it works. For you, c'est la vie. Uh, I brought my masher from home, you know what I mean? But it does the trick, eh? Dee da da. All these jobs are very therapeutic, you know, you can just get lost in them, you know. Bum, bum, bum. Again, mashed potato tends to go in and out of vogue, depending on what the... But mashed potato is so versatile, so many things you can do with it, you know. Marco Pierre White that was famous for his mash, was it? I don't know, I think the, the, French are, the French are really into mashed potato, but they make this mashed potato with so much double cream that you have a heart attack, you know? Yeah, the same amount uh, of double cream as potato or tatty. Now I need six eggs. That's a lot of eggs, it's only 500 grams of thing. But I need six eggs, and I need to add them three whole eggs, one at a time. Do -da -da. Da -da. And this is something you can make up a day in advance, two days in advance, whatever. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Somewhere, ah. Oh, Guess what that's called? I bought it online. Cost me ten pounds sixty-five. Yorkshireman. It's a potato sieve. That's what it was called. So I had some potatoes to sieve. So what did I buy? A potato sieve. And when I got it, what did I think? That's not bloody good. It's far too fine. That won't work, will it? But you know what? The people that made this said it was a potato sieve. And you know what it's good at? Sieving potatoes. And again, it shows you that other people know a lot better than you for a lot of the time. You know what I mean? The other thing what it's very good at is sieving anything. But it's very good for potatoes. I'm just going to sieve these to make sure that they're beautiful. 
And the way, the thing to do is use one of these things. For 50 years, I've had one of these in my back pocket. A scraper. They're fantastic. The two things I recommend are a scraper and one of these. Save you a fortune. And they also means if you make 27 portions, you get 27 portions. If you don't have one of these or one of these, you might get 26 or 25. It's very important. This is, what this is going to do is just going to make sure that it's really smooth. And yes, you could put it in a machine. But I've found over the years that usually doing things by hand take a bit longer, but they work well. Eh? You do know that good cooking takes time. So does bad. There's very little difference. Eh? There's very little difference between good cooking and bad cooking. It's the people, the feeling, what they want to achieve, if they're enjoying it. I've got to be honest, I can't say I went to work every day of my life and I was singing and dancing and happy as a Larry. But for 99% of the time I did. I enjoyed what I did. I enjoy cooking. You know, for the last few days, I've been cooking a bit. I cook every day at home. But I've been practicing a few things, just get myself back into rhythm. The other thing is, practice makes perfect. And unless you're practicing, unless you're doing it regularly, you get a bit uh, rusty. So it's good to practice, it's good to try. The other thing which is quite trendy nowadays, and it's not possible in most places, but is to have an experimental kitchen. Have a separate space, but it's not always financially possible, it's not always possible full stop. When Noba, the Danish restaurant with three stars, was at its prime, and it's still very good now, what they used to do is after the service, start experimenting. The service had finished at midnight, and sometimes they'd be there till three in the morning experimenting. And then they'd be back up the next morning for the shift. And that's quite a tough one. But you have to, however busy you are, just take a little bit of time and try something. And that way you get satisfaction. We're getting there. I wish it won't be a minute. But again, by putting this through the sieve, it'll give it that extra little bit. The other thing is, my advice to anybody that's starting out, if you want to learn how to cook, go work with somebody who can cook. Work somewhere decent, work somewhere good. And it doesn't have to be exotic, the best job I ever had was the first job I ever had. There was two ladies there, they were Italian, and they taught me a lot. The fact it was a hall of residence with 700 girl students had nothing whatsoever to do with it. But, but their heart was in cooking. And even if we, whether they were making an apple pie for 700 people or whatever, there was love going into it, and it was nice. Doo, doo, doo. Remember doing the same job with chicken and fish? But again with this. So at the moment we've got 500 grams of potatoes. Probably the most expensive thing was the eggs. We're nearly there. I'm being nice today, I'm putting it in a bowl, you see, but if 
it would be better to put it on a somewhere flat. I've got some spinach puree there, which I'll show you later on, which I did exactly the same way. I think the other thing in cooking, what happens a lot of the time, you know, this would take me a little bit of time. It's a bit of effort. People say, well, we'll just skip that bit and we'll move on. We'll just throw the mashed potato in. And then again, and it'll work, but it won't be the same. It'll be seven out of 10 instead of 10 out of 10. Okay. Doo, doo, doo. Wow. Good. Just gonna put that over there. It's a bit messy, wasn't it? Hey. Again, when you get a wee messy job, stop. Wash your hands, tidy up, start again. Don't try and plow on, you know, so that you end up with a full of rubbish. Right, George. Oh, another egg. Potatoes. But I think in this day and age, like I was saying before with costs, things like this have got to come to the forefront. And what I'll show you from this is how to create a dish that you could sell for a couple of quid or you could sell for 35 pounds. But you know, throughout my career, anybody ever asked me for a recipe, I always gave them it. Because a recipe is absolutely useless, unless you have the feeling to make it and the desire to make it. The other thing to watch out for in this career, you will get recipes from some people who shall be nameless, and they don't work. And just on purpose, they always forget. I worked with a pastry cook from Glen Eagles. Is, is, a, is a teacher now in a certain college, and I won't say where, but it's not in this country. And every recipe he gave you didn't work because he always, always missed one thing out. We need three egg whites here. We keep the yolks for something separate. I've got a wee little cockapoo. She's four years old. She likes egg yolks. So there you go. The other thing is you can see, I'm not using my hands there. Don't use your hands, your hands are warm. Eggs don't like warmth. Bacteria grows, whatever. That's why eggs got a shell, just so you can do that. Whoops, don't drop the shell in it either. Et voila. They were Aldi price, so we're all right. <laughs> You just stir that up. And I've got 750 grams of potato starch. Sorry, 75 grams of potato starch. Now, I bought that online. I bought it from a health food store. <laughs> In the old days, we used to call it fécule, which is obviously French. And what, that, what it does, it thickens anything. Yeah, chef just said put a little bit of fécule in that. That's it. Seasoning. And what it should do, it should look like the pastry cream. 
Again, most things that you cook, whether you're making a souffle or whatever, the stages where it should look like something. It should be of a certain consistency. It should be that. And I can guarantee you, if you get to that point, like there, and it's runny, and it's, it's wrong. You've done something wrong. We all do something wrong. We all make mistakes. The thing with a mistake, that's what this is for. Don't, don't carry on, because you're just making yourself more problems. You know, get rid of it there and then start again. Like I say, this batter, you can make it up. It'll last for at least three days. Um, and there you go. If you think it's too, too thick, you can put a little bit of cream in. And this is uh, farmyard uh, produced, grows in the ground kind of stuff. So there you go. So what I would do normally if, if, if I was in the workplace, you'd make that up. You put some cling film over it, wrap fast, whatever you like to call it. You put it in the fridge and you're ready for the service. Because at the end of the day, let's face it, all the graft is done prior to service. If you're trying to do too much in the service, it'll never work, never. You, make, you do all the work in the morning, pre-service or whenever, and then you, you do it. Right, George, let's see if we can uh, cook a pancake. Yeah, we don't want it too hot, George. The other thing, I haven't brought it with me, but these, you can get rapeseed oil, sunflower oil, olive oil in sprays. And I'll tell you, they're very, very good. They're very economical, very... This pan won't need much oil at all. Oh, it's warm already. That's because it's induction. Seduction. And then all we do, we take a wee thing and we put it in the pan. Now this is the point where you have to make a decision. Would I like a big pancake? Would I like a small pancake? Do I want it for an amuse? Do I want it for a main course? Do I want to put a fried egg on top of it? Do I want to put a poached egg on top of it? Do I want to put truffle on top of it? What do I want to do with it? Because the beauty of something like this is you can use it for many, many different things, depending. The other thing is this. Ooh, this is that Jeff Blanding for dinner tonight? Making my bloody great one, eh? That'll fill him up, eh? You know, that's what's important, eh? I don't know if you can see that, but it sets. You see? And it moves about the pan, no bother. Okay, can we go for the 35 quid one? Yeah. Truffles. Black truffles. Funny enough, from England. Yeah. Do we need truffles? No. Can we put sage leaves? Yeah. Could we put nothing? Yeah. This is a puree of spinach I made earlier. If I manage to turn this over. Oh, there you go. Warm, reeking, rich. The beauty about this potato pancake too is you can eat it warm, you can eat it hot, you can eat it cold. Amazing, huh? And this is what I'm trying to say to you, you know, making things that have multi-purpose work great. You know what I mean? And if you can do that, then you can make life a lot easier and, and more flexibility, build flexibility into what you do. That doesn't mean to say that, you know, do you do 25 different pancakes a day because it'll send you around the bend. But what it does mean is when the broccoli's in season, you might make it broccoli. When the spinach is in season, you might make it spinach. When tomatoes in season, you might dry them and put them. You know, there's, there's lots, lots of opportunities. You know, I'm just going to leave that a second more. But while, while I'm waiting, I'm going to make a bigger one. I don't know why. I just fancy making a bigger one. I 
I mean, in its simplest form, you could do like an egg Benedictine and all that kind of stuff, egg Florentine, egg with smoked salmon. You could use them instead of blennies. You could do, you could go on forever, what you can do with it. So if, if you are, see the truffles? If you are going to do that, you make up a big, a big mix and then you can divide it. What you can also do, maybe, I'm just going to get another bowl. If I have time, I'm going to speak about this. A Japanese salad. Oof. Okay. I had this on the menu for, I don't know, a few years. All I did was make a puree of spinach. Did I use my wee machine there? At Christmas time in Dunelm, they were selling red little bowls, solid red bowls, with cookie mix in, cookie cutters, and one of them on special, two pound odd. Brilliant. Yorkshire. Wow. That looks funny. Sure you'll love that. I've put spinach puree in there. I put spinach puree in there. How many purees in the next five minutes could you think of that you could put in there? I can tell you hundreds, couldn't you? Hundreds. Because you've got so many eggs in it, it's nice and light. You can. I can see it. No, it's risen. No, no. Yeah. I mean, Pom Souffle. Is that you know? What do you think? Hey, it's just a pancake, a bit of tatty. Bit of tatty. Bit of tatty. I'm going to put that there. An there go this way, yeah. An elevated bit of tatty. Who works in a restaurant or a hotel that can't afford a potato? This pancake that I've just put in the thing there now, I used to serve it a lot with, with langoustine or crabs and things like that. But can you imagine that pancake made with the stem broccoli? And then you chop the stalks and put it in. And you put the stem broccoli on the top. And then you put the cheese on the top of that. And you put the walnuts around. Utilising every single bit. Yep. Now we're going to see if we can get some magic with this going. What I've got in there is mushroom stock, which I made with the dried mushrooms that were left over. The bits of mushrooms thing, I made a wee mushroom stock. I put a bit of garlic in it, and I put a bit of um, onion in it. That's it. And then I reduced it down, and then I thickened it with a bit of my potato fecule. How's that doing, George? Oh, it's looking, doing all right. It's looking good. It's working this all right today, George. See, I told you you get to love it. Reminds me of the old spinach subriques. And I'm going to put some cream in this. I don't know if you call it cream, but it's... Plant-based. Pla it is plant-based, aye. But somebody's going, to, somebody's going to come back to me in the next few weeks with an alternative phrase. I, I know they are. I know they are. They're going to come back. Because that's what it needs. It needs, it needs a bit of PR, doesn't it? Because plant-based to me doesn't sound great. When what you're making is great, you know, it, it's interesting, it's nice, it's special. You think it's burning, George? Whoops. There you go. How easy was that, eh? Herbs, spices, vegetables, whatever you could put in it. It's unbelievable. From what? A basic recipe. And yes, 
It might take you a bit of time. Jesus, that tastes all right. <laughs> good. Very good. Maybe a bit more salt. Maybe not. I think, again, salt's an interesting thing. Most of us, like me, I was brought up on fish and chips in Bradford. And they put enough salt on there to bury or whatever. So it took me a few years to get used to the taste to get the salt right. The small one with the truffles on was served in a three-star Michelin in, in, in France with a truffle sauce that was similar to what I've got there. But what could you add to that? English asparagus. You're Again. Ha you were happy now. <laughs> it could be grilled, it could be sauteed, it could be whatever. I made a couple of other wee things. This, I got a flat mushroom. I squared it off, I cooked it with garlic and herbs. I baked it in the oven. Et voila, one mushroom finished. This one, again, came from Worcestershire, the tomatoes. All I did was saute them with thyme and garlic and the rapeseed oil and pressed it in a cup. It's not sort of a dish, this. This is more just trying to talk seasonally, trying to yeah. give you ideas. And then just around this little, the little one, I'm gonna put a little bit of this. And this was made, apart from the cream, with just trimmings. I'm so sorry, just recap what you've got in the pan here. Please, Jeff, what have got? Recap what's in the pan, exactly. Just um, water, mushrooms. Again, if you're making a stock like that, fry off the onions, mushrooms, and garlic, and thyme. Add the water, and then cook it out. But what I've got in there that's giving it power is the dried mushrooms I put through the sieve, the Thai sieve, and the bits that were left in there, I put them in there, and that's what's giving it the hump, you know? And then because I want to charge you a lot of money, I'm just going to put some little strips of truffle around that. Because you're tough. I worked in Newcastle for a while, and the menu was all in French. And a guy from the Taste of England came to me and said, you know, Jeff, what's all this? You know, the menu's still in French. He says, why is the menu in French? I said, well, I can charge you an extra couple of quid. And he left. All that is, what I've got there, is an idea. Or maybe five ideas. Or maybe 500 ideas. 500. And none of them are difficult. They're all easy. Because they have to work every single time. Not nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten. And if you can do that, you're winning. Plant-based, vegetarian, vegan, and you can just stretch it into, well, as you say, yeah. dozens and dozens of ideas, but I think um, Chef's given you the building blocks here for what you can take ahead. Can I give this to taste? Yeah, yeah. The last thing I'm gonna do. Doesn't have to be. Is even simpler. I've made one up because I wanted to show you the finished article before I started. I wanted to show you what I got this day. I went to a Michelin star restaurant in Munich and it was okay, it was good. And we got to the dessert and at that time most of the desserts were quite complicated with bits of this and bits of that and lots of other things on them. And when this dessert came out, it was in a white bowl with a white top. And the only thing to garnish it was a flower. 
And that's how it arrived at the table. And if you wanted, this came from my garden this morning. There's a, there's a little bit of flowering mint. There's another one, chocolate mint. Grows, grows in your garden, no bother. Just get a wee tub, buff. And it came out like that. There was four of us around the table. That's not much, is it? It's all white. Where's the color contrast? Where's the this? Where's... The chef wasn't trying to do a color contrast. What he was trying to do was give you a surprise. Because what that did was say, what's underneath there? And then the mind started working. I wonder what's under there. And that's what he was trying to achieve with that. The topping today, I put, I put yogurt and honey. But you could put a white mousse of any kind or whatever. And that's what set the brain going. And what I've got underneath there today, from Oroid and Son, Yorkshire rhubarb. It's in season, it's good. Is it Blacketti side? I don't know. Thank you. Strawberries. What could be better than that? And nectarine. Why did I pick those? Because I thought they were in season. They were good. They were quality. They tasted nice. That's the only reason I picked them. But what does that say? That says that as the year goes on, when the raspberries come, you can use raspberries. When the pears come, you can use pears. When the apples come, you can use apples. When the figs come, you can use figs. When the thing... So suddenly, you're talking seasonal. You haven't done anything really, have you? You just picked the best. So you've married seasonal and the best. So what are you going to end up with? Something good. That's what it's about. And you've done it dead easily. So I've got my Yorkshire rhubarb here, and I've stewed it down. Have I stewed it? Not really. What I did is I, take a, I took a dry pan, I put a little bit of butter in it, but you could use margarine, you could use oil, you could use whatever you want. And then from there, what have I done? I've thrown the rhubarb in. I've put a little bit of sugar, not much, just a little bit of sugar. Then, what have I done? I've put one of those magical things on top. These are magical. You want to save money in cooking? Put a lid on it. It'll boil in half the time. Eh? If you want to keep the goodness in, the steam in, put a lid on it. These things are worth the weight in gold. Most people put them in the cupboard. It's too busy. They'll save you a lot of time. No water in this. No water, because there's enough water in rhubarb. Put a lid on it. It works. The other thing I've got in there to make it special, a vanilla pod. Again, it's adding something that's relatively expensive to something that's fairly inexpensive and marrying the two together. So you could make any kind of puree you want. Of course, you don't need to make a puree. You could just use fruit. The choice is yours. moment of truth huh? if you eat it and it's hard and it's tasteless don't use it if you eat it like I've just eaten that and it tastes it and it actually tastes of a nectarine because let's face it whatever you cook whether it's spinach whether it's potato whether it's tomato what should it taste of it should taste of what it is it's broccoli what should it taste of broccoli and sometimes we we forget this that basic thing but that's what it's supposed to be. The rhubarb's supposed to taste the rhubarb. Yes, it's got a little bit of sugar in. Yes, it's got a hint of vanilla in. But if all you could taste is the vanilla, you've got it wrong. If all you could taste is the sugar, you've got it wrong. You've got to taste the rhubarb. You put the nectarine in. 
Again, we talk about portions. This could be in a bowl like that, a bowl like that, a bowl like that, a bowl like that. For today, I've just got a wee bowl. Strawberries. Don't do that. Somebody's grown that. Somebody's had the love and the care to grow that. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can pull the center out. If you can't, you take a wee knife, that's a small knife for you English people, and you do that. And can you see that? He's taking the, the thing out. That's what you do. You take the time to do that. That's the difference. All these little things are the difference. Not something magical up there. Ducasse is not any more magical than anybody else. He just cares. You know? The other thing about recipes, seeing I'm talking about Ducasse, Ducasse has had a rum baba or a savaran on his menu now for over 30 odd years. It's the same recipe he's always had. He has it in all his restaurants. The recipe works every time. It's good. He presents it differently in the different, but the recipe is the same. And that's what makes him great. But yeah, it, there's a way to do this and a way not to. And the way is not and put half of them in the bucket. And then we, I'm going to slice it. I could chop it. I could do whatever I want with it. You know, it doesn't make any difference. And then we're going to put it in there. But what are we going to do? We're going to taste it. We're going to make sure that it's good. Because then when we give it to a guest, what are they going to say? Yeah, bloody good. Oh, the strawberries in that were great. Hey, the rhubarb. Oh, it was great. You're giving yourself a chance. You're making it easier for yourself. Because you know when it goes over that hot plate or cold plate or whatever plate you want to do. I did a thing in... Um, I don't know. Are you here? Yeah, you were there. We went to Cardiff, and for the hot plate, we had um, what they called fish boxes with a tablecloth over the top because it was in a tent. But when stuff went up on that, you did the same thing before it goes to the customer, not afterwards. You knew it was going to be right, and that's what's important. We've tasted the rhubarb; it's great, and with a hint of vanilla. We've tasted the nectarines; they're great. They're ripe, they taste what they should do. We've tasted the strawberries. I've got yogurt here. I've put actually just a little bit of honey in it, just to take the tartness off it. But on top of that now, you could put a vanilla mousse if you wanted. You could put a rhubarb mousse, you could put whatever you like. All we're trying to do is get a little bit of interest. That's all. So that when the customer gets it, like I did in the three other chefs, go, oh, what's that? What's there? And why did you do that? You did it to, to get your, this part of your brain working, you know? And then all you need to do, and let's face it, you don't need, to, you don't need to be the greatest pastry cook in the world to do this. And you could do the same for this for a pre-dessert or whatever. But you do need to make sure that what you've got tastes good. I don't believe there's anybody in this room today that couldn't do anything that I've done. I don't believe it. If you've got the desire, I think Anything I've done here today, you could do. There's nothing, there's nothing difficult. There's nothing, there's nothing that needs any real specialist equipment. There's nothing that's out of this world. All we've done is take some nice food, cook it as nicely as possible, and serve it as nicely as possible. There's a guy who stood near, near me and his favorite saying is hot, hot plates, hot food, if it's supposed to be hot. If it can be served warm, serve it warm. If it's supposed to be cool, serve it cool. If it's supposed to be at room temperature, serve it at room temperature. 
but always serve it what it should be. Don't think, I'm a great chef. I'm going to serve this uh, warm because my food cut the crap. If it's supposed to be hot, serve it hot. If it can be cold. There is dishes, a lot of these dishes, you could serve them hot, you could serve them cold, you could serve them with a vinaigrette, you could serve them with a sauce, you could serve them with lots of things. But all it is, is taking nice ingredients and using the best. Talk to people. Build up, start with an empty box and build it up with recipes that work and they work every time. The other thing is, I don't know if it's come across today, but I've quite enjoyed my journey in the kitchen. Eh? Plenty of shite times, eh? but plenty of great times. Plenty of great people I've met. Supplier, great suppliers I've met. Great cooks I've met. Young lads, young girls. Again, it doesn't matter if you're male, female, whatever. Whoever you are, if you have the desire to be a chef, what a great life you can have. I hope maybe you've seen something that say, ah, that's okay. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you think, what a nutter that old boy is. Hey? What a nutter. Hey, maybe I am, I don't know. But I enjoy being one. I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. <laughs>